Whether you live in 187 square feet like we do, or a 4,000 square foot home, it doesn't matter. Paper clutter can bury you. How can you control it? We have five tips and a bonus. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Maureen. Gary's out running errands, and I, he might be back by the time I'm getting finishing up here. We live in 187 square feet. We live full-time RV, and we have very limited space. And paper is unbelievable. The things that we get in paper that just just takes up so much room and takes up so much of our time and energy and everything else. And if you live in a home, a house house, a stick built, then you probably have more room, but you can still get overwhelmed with the paper. I'm going to talk about five tips that have really helped us to keep things a little more under control. We're still working on it, it's a work in progress, but we thought maybe somebody can benefit from these five. Here we go. Number one. This one may be really obvious to most of you, but I cannot believe how many people still get paper bills and pay by snail mail to pay their bills. So that's tip number one. Get and pay your bills online. If you're watching this video, you are capable of doing that because you obviously have internet. So just get everything taken care of, get all your accounts taken care of, all your billing taken care of online. There are a lot of benefits to that. One is that they will keep record of the whole thing and can send you a summary at the end of the year. Like with credit cards. They can send you a summary of the whole year and, and break it down even by category of how you spent things. The second thing is that mail is getting slower. I don't know if, if you've noticed, if it's happened to you or not, but it took over two weeks for our Christmas letters to get out to people. And we sent them out in the very, very beginning, like the 2nd of December. And it took 15, 16 days for most people to get their letters. Yeah. So mail is not going fast like it used to. I remember one time, and this was years ago before we could even do online business, I paid a bill. The day I got the bill, I wrote out a check <laughs> before credit cards, and I put it in the mail, and it took over two weeks to get to them, and I got a late payment because it was past one day past the day. I don't know what took so long for them to get it, but I got slapped with a seven, with a $25 fee. So mail can also be stolen. You can have your mail stolen out of your mailbox. We've seen people, there's a lot of videos on YouTube of people stealing things off of people's porches who have security cameras. So if you're doing it because you don't feel safe doing it online, here's a couple of tips on that. Make sure you always have a strong password. That I cannot emphasize enough. It amazes me how many people still use their, their names as their password or their address as a password. Get creative, think of something else. Upper and lower case letters, um, numbers and symbols. Make it a strong password. And if anything ever happens and you feel like it's just something's not right, change it as soon as you can. Number two, use your phone. Use your phone. It's like a little mini computer. If you have a smartphone, you can put things on your calendar and get notifications when birthdays and anniversaries and things like that come up. You can put in your reminders. I have an Android and on mine, on my phone, I have something called reminders and I can put things in there. I have like 160 reminders in there right now. I have a list of things I want to do in Corpus Christi while we're staying here. I have grocery lists that are ongoing. I can keep them in there and just put an asterisk in front of the things that I need to get that trip. Uh, or I can just create a whole new list if I want to every time. Um, people that we meet when we're out walking, we'll, I'll quick put that in my phone because I always carry my phone with me when we go. 
you never know when there might be a photo op of some kind and every time I don't have my camera I see something I wish I had my camera to take a picture of so I carry my phone with me all the time anyway as soon as we meet somebody I put their names in my phone right away so I can remember them when we get back and I can put it in my journal we'll get to that in a minute on your calendar you can have things repeat and also on reminders you can have things repeat every day every week every month every year and then as things are completed for that day you just hit complete or dismiss don't delete it because it won't come back the following time that you need it but that has been very helpful I have several reminders that come up I have two reminders every day I have uh, several that come up every week every month and every year and then they just keep repeating and I don't have to keep putting them in my phone I carry my phone with me of course into the grocery store and then as I'm putting things in my cart I just check it off of my phone it just is so much easier no paper my newest organizational tip is number five and that's coming up so keep watching and then the bonus is after that you don't want to miss it number three is let go of old records it used to be you had to keep your tax records for seven years then they changed it and now it's three years if you have tax records that go way back for beyond that you don't need them talk to your tax preparer he'll probably tell you what you need and what you don't and most likely he'll just say you can pitch them burn them take them to a place that shreds them for you do whatever you know most of the stuff is done online now we've been doing our taxes online for the last several years it's it's all there we don't need we can just print off things that we need and file a few things that we have for receipts or whatever we can put those in a folder and it takes up very little room we don't need to be hanging on to the things that we used to hang on to if you have bank statements and things like that your bank has all that information if you ever need it so once you've balanced your checkbook and you see that everything's there you can probably just shred it let it go or keep it for a year and then let it go however you want to do that but you don't have to be holding on to old records let them go I know people who have boxes and boxes and boxes full of old stuff and they and there's something else in there too that they don't need and I'll get to that in a minute when I was a young girl, my mom gave me my first diary. I think I was in junior high. And then all through high school, I kept a diary. Then I went for several years without writing anything. And I kind of got back into it again when computers became a thing. And I started keeping some things in, in a file in my computer. But that wasn't every day and it wasn't all the time. And so when we started on our journey, um, a full-time RV seven years ago almost seven years ago I bought a journal and every year I get a new journal and it has this one I really like I get these at Martles or Hobby Lobby because they have Bible passages at the bottom of every page so I, I can always have my Bible passages at the end of each page I like to do it in different colors because it just makes it more interesting when I'm paging through it and I'm looking for something I like to have different colors some days are only half a page some days are a full page some are three pages it just depends on what's going on in the day I talk about the weather I talk about the people we've met I talk about the places we go the things going on at the church that we're currently serving I just a lot of a lot of thoughts uh, things going on with family a lot of things with family are in our journal so it's it's just a great thing and I I refer back to these a lot there are times when Gary has said what year was it that we were at such and such a place and I can kind of remember the year because I keep a YouTube channel and a Facebook page <laughs> and those two things have greatly helped improve my memory as well so that's a benefit of writing things down you retain things 35 percent better if you if you write it down just saying so I I have the the journals and I, I like keeping those and that has been great you know when when I'm gone if somebody wants to read them they can if they don't it doesn't matter it it's just mostly for me 
to remember things and it's helped my memory a lot. Okay, number five. This is a new system that I started doing and I was inspired by my friend Shelly. She has a notebook, but hers is thicker. It has sections in it and it has tabs. She does, uh, she has a tab for recipes that she hears about or a friend shares with her. She has a tab for home maintenance and car maintenance. She has a tab for um, the, the week, each week. Uh, I think she maybe has a tab for the whole month at a glance, but I'm not positive on that. And then she always has a Bible passage that she works on every week, too. I think she has several Bible passages, or maybe one every day. And she will write notes on that and, and really deep dig in deeper into a Bible passage so she has a better understanding of it. And I really admire that. I am getting a daily Bible passage every day by Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway. It's online. Some people do U version and they get their Bible passages that way. We talked this about this a little bit in another video that we did on uh, how to get your Bible reading every day. And so I, I get mine that way and I just do it on by looking at it and studying it that way. But she writes hers down. Now what I started doing, I didn't start this until December started this this thing I used to write notes I had notes everywhere I, I had people would call me and I'd grab a piece of paper and write down a note or somebody would I, I had or I had a list of things that I had to do that week and I I would write it down I, I have all these notes everywhere and it was just getting way out of hand so in December I started just doing it on pieces of paper and I did it a week at a glance but with no dates. The only dates were at the very top, the week of such and such. Uh, this was the week of December 3rd through the 9th. I start with Sunday and with Saturday. I just check them off as things go get done. If it doesn't get done, it went to the following week and I would do it that way um, until everything was done. I was writing other little notes on there. If somebody called me and I wrote, wrote would write down a note of what they talked about or what they wanted me to do or look up or whatever that would all go on those sheets too and I did this for the whole month of December so it's never too late to start in January I got a regular notebook <clears throat> and I have it at a glance I have my week at a glance Sunday through Saturday I go to church every Sunday that's a given but I there's all these different things that I maybe have to do while I'm there especially e each church that Gary serves these vacancies there's always something different that I'm doing at each of the churches and so I just like to um, add those in there to make sure I don't forget to do them as I get things done I check them off on the old sheet they were not listed by the day on this one they are listed by the day and that has been helpful and then if I and then I can always I'm paging ahead to the next week and the next week I have like four or five weeks at a time in here and then I'm just penciling things in if I'm not sure about them it's been working out really well and I can't tell you how many times I have been tempted to grab that little piece of paper I'm like no no <laughs> I'll just put it in the margin on this this is a new week so this is pretty nice and neat this is I'll show you one of the first weeks that I did this is what it looked like by the end of the week <laughs> with all the notes that I added to it. it. It gets messy, but it's all on one paper, and I like that. And then at the end of the year, I can just put a, a uh, label this for the year if I ever think I need to go back to it. I probably won't ever have to go back to this because a lot of information is in the journal that I really need to keep. It's just something to help me keep organized and to make less paper. And now for the bonus tip. You're going to think this is really crazy, but again, I can't believe how many people do this. Throw away junk mail. I know people who have so much junk mail stacked up in their houses because they're going to get to it eventually. No, when the mail comes, I know you're busy. You're working, you're busy, you got kids, you got pets, you've got other responsibilities. 
Just take five minutes, five minutes a day to go through your mail. And if it's junk mail, you know that immediately, you shred it right away, or you put it in a bag that's gonna go to a shredder or whatever, but you get rid of that. You get that out of your house, you don't need it. If you wanna do an application for a credit card, you can do that online. You don't need to do it through their offers. Another thing I recommend is signing up for paperless, paperless, paperless bills, paperless receipts, paperless anything that they want to send you by mail, paperless promotions. I sign up for paperless on all of that. And then on my email to keep that under control, I oftentimes will cancel anything for promotions or whatever. I, a lot of times I will opt out of those to control my email a lot better. We are we are bombarded with information every day, bombarded with paper and receipts and newsletters and blah, there's just so many things and I, I we have a newsletter here for the RV park that we're staying in this winter. We can get it one of two ways. We can get it printed out at the office or we can get it online. I get it online and when the week is over, it's gone. As I've been going through all of this, you maybe have some questions. Leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. If you, maybe you thought of some things, maybe it triggered an idea for you or inspired you in some other way, put that in the comments down below too because it may be helpful to me or to other people as well. What was your favorite tip? And what do you want to start doing this year? Now, you want to get into a good habit of, of doing it so you can reduce your paper clutter. Put that in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. It doesn't cost anything. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. And then next to it, a notification bell is going to pop up. Ring the notification bell and then you'll know whenever new videos are coming up. We have all kinds of tips on living small, living in an RV, travel, you name it. Anything to do with being with our living full-time RV, we do it. Until next time, God bless.